Howdy everybody, and welcome to the first episode of the Mega Man tutorial. So, uh, some people have expressed an interest in learning how to import the project and set everything up. And of course, well, here it is. So, let's get cracking. To get started, we're going to go over to uh, our tools here and we're going to import a local package. Go to my desktop. We have our NES Game Maker Mega Man Tutorial Assets, YYMP. Let's open that. And you'll see we have sprites, tile sets, sounds, scripts, etc., etc., etc. Right? So to import them, simply highlight all of them and click Add, or you could have just hit Add All, I guess, and hit Import. This is a brand new project that's never been touched, by the way. So, just create a brand new project. And here they all are. Now we have our sprites, pickups, miscellaneous, etc. The reason why we are going to be importing all these things instead of, uh, say, uh, giving you the pictures directly and then having you put them in is because, A, nobody ever does that. And B, because I do a lot of setup with the... Uh, image origin and collision mask and by using the import system it looks like it does not save the collision mask information or maybe it does let me check here Oh yeah, with the helmetless one, I never even bothered setting up a uh, sprite mask because it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, so it does with these ones. So as you can see there, collision mask is set up. And actually you can see here that um, our origin is at the bottom middle of our collision masks as we uh, set them up. And the reason why the collision mask isn't all the way at the bottom is because we want the sprites to have one pixel of their feet in the ground. That way you get that uh, embedded look that the NES characters all had. Let's close all that. And we also have uh, tile sets. I've previously shown how to set up tile sets, so hopefully you'll be able to... Uh, you won't need any help with this, but uh, they're there if you need to look at them. And of course our collision tiles. We have a, a solid collision, a platform collision, which is not really used in this tutorial, and a ladder. Our sounds and music. So. And so on. These have all been set up so uh, that uh, music is considered compressed, not streamed, because it is a uh, a MP3 uh, file. And effects, not that one, are uncompressed, not streamed, because they are they are um, they are uh, dot wave files and dot wave files are uncompressed and it looks like the audio group did not come in so let's go over here audio groups yeah so let's create a new uh, audio group here uh, let's see music and here all things titled music move to music all the things titled effects move to effects that's easy that's why we keep everything titled properly that way it's easy to work with uh, let's see what else can we do to set up we have our scripts macro script which you'll remember from other previous projects direction 4 direction 8 
uh, throw in a randomize for randomization processes. And we have here our uh, font. You'll see that uh, it's actually kind of wonky, and that's because the font that Mega Man has it did not include things like uh, the number 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 because it wasn't in there. Apparently they didn't plan on needing to use it in the font that I uh, got from the uh, game. Then we have the C here. The reason why C is there is because it's mapped to uh, the copyright symbol. So you just type a lowercase c and that gives you the copyright symbol. And same with R. R is uh, for Doctor, for Dr. Wiley, and other things. Then we have a few globals. You'll remember music volume, sound effect volume, debug, pause. And then we have some stuff for the uh, game. So we have our uh, new weapon, Master Defeated, previous stage, and we'll go over that stuff later. Macros, tile width, tile height, and sec. And we also have this palette underscore swap underscore init. Uh, I did not include the palette swap code in this tutorial because I did not want to uh, redistribute uh, pixelated Pope's uh, copyrighted material. So if you want to get the palette swap, uh, the palette swap shader though, you just uh, go and download his material. You can do it through the marketplace, I believe. So, or uh, through uh, itch.io. In fact, you'll need it though because we'll need it later on for doing palette swapping. But I'll be more explicit about it when we actually get to that point. Same with all these uh, globals as well. Fonts, font default. I created this just because I was getting really annoyed that uh, the font that Mega Man had didn't have all the numbers. So this includes all that information. I just use a uh, random pixel font that I have that's size 8. You can use your own if uh, it didn't get included. And of course our rooms. So uh, room zero, yeah. Delete, don't need that. So room in it. How do we set this up? Uh, we instances, background, those are just all the standard stuff. We have our, but more importantly, we have our room width and room height. So 256, 240. That's the uh, size of rooms, the base room size in the NES games. All right, just pulling up some information here. And of course, then we have room copyright, which will have some other stuff, room intro. We have here, as you can see, the uh, tight, the uh, the tower that you uh, scroll over as you do the uh, scrolling system thing for the introduction. And mode select, stage select, master display, and more importantly, the uh, woodman stage. There it is. I wonder why it wasn't showing up because we're so zoomed out. This room is 4096 by 1884 because I used one giant background sprite for the entire stage. And then I used tiles to uh, fill in the edges where the uh, in the NES they uh, subtract eight pixels from the top and the bottom for uh, overscan pro uh, on CRT monitors back in the day. But uh, I didn't include that because we are not going to be doing the eight pixel offset. We are just going to do a full 256 by 240 view instead of uh, by 224. And uh, so on and so forth. We'll go over the rooms as we need them more. Uh, go down to your options, main windows, and graphics. Let me uh, make sure about that. Uh, we want to allow full screen switching. Uh, you probably won't end up using that, but if you do, make sure you keep the aspect ratio and more importantly, texture page size 4096 by 4096. 
you need to be able to accommodate that big background picture. I had a lot of trouble with this when I was set up the tutorial because I had no, re no idea why the uh, background image wasn't working until eventually I realized, oh yeah, I need to fix the uh, texture page size. And make sure that's at 60. Yep, seems unreasonable. Hit OK, OK. And let's see, how far are we into this? We are currently at 10 minutes, so that means we can get started setting up some objects. Oh, yeah. Just making sure I was actually recording sound here because it would be quite terrible if I went through all this and I was doing all this talking and I hadn't actually recorded anything. So, objects. We have to set up our init object here as usual. So, we're going to call this obj underscore init. And it will not be persistent or anything we're just going to add a create event and let me do some zoom in here for you this is going to be very simple we're going to create our init objects instance underscore create underscore layer x y doesn't really matter where you create them instances and we're going to want to Copy on that, two, three, four, five objects. These are our important starting objects. obj underscore input, obj underscore camera, obj underscore transitions, obj underscore stats, and obj underscore music underscore manager. All right, those are our main objects we're going to start with. So let's start with the camera. And if you feel like it, I have a bunch of little miscellaneous sprites. Uh, let's see, miscellaneous that you can use for these things. So object in it, I have like a little exclamation mark here. Come over to the room here. To uh, ruminate, drag in that guy, just put him off the side so anything he creates is invisible over there. And object camera, miscellaneous, it's a little camera or display. No, wait, completely wrong. This one is actually somewhat important for, uh, there we go for uh, testing purposes because this is a centered sprite so you can easily tell where the camera is actually at. Uh, this camera is based off of the camera that Pixelated Pope has designed, his easy to use uh, GMS2 camera with a few uh, state modifications. And excuse me that I keep going uh because that's just uh, something I do. Sorry. Enum cam underscore mode. Because we're going to add some states here. We want targeted, fixed, and free. So these are, no. Don't care about steam. State underscore is equal to cam underscore mode dot fixed. And well, there's some other variable here, but I'll get to it later on when we actually put in rooms. So, uh, actually, I put in a note here. Uh, our goal is to resize the game to the maximum pixel perfect size allowable by default that fits your screen. Okay, that seems reasonable, right? Minus one zoom level, or else you end up uh, you end up. Uh, overlapping the toolbar at the bottom of the screen if you're on Windows. And uh, yeah, that should be that for that. And we're going to set up some properties. V 
u underscore width underscore is equal to 256 u underscore height underscore is equal to 240 display underscore width underscore is equal to display underscore get underscore width to get your size of your monitor and our zoom and minus one or two or three or whatever offset you want if you're going to be doing a lot of it you should probably actually uh put in some sort of a clamp so that you can only go under or above a certain numbers but we'll just do one because that usually works perfectly and pound macro cam is a view underscore camera is zero we'll need that later window underscore set underscore size view underscore width underscore times zoom underscore and view underscore height underscore times zoom underscore display underscore set underscore GUI underscore size view underscore width underscore view underscore height underscore and last but not least surf underscore resize application underscore surface view underscore width times zoom view underscore height times zoom now uh, with the application surface uh, you can you can set it up so that there is no zoom there and it'll work perfectly fine because this game is pixel perfect and does not have rotations or anything that would uh, require sub pixels but if you want smooth sprite rotations or sub pixel animation you're going to want that zoom in there i believe you can get like up to 10 times zoom and it'll be just well you can probably zoom up to the size of your uh, you could probably, well, I tested it out and it worked it fine up until around 10 times zoom level and then started having problems at that point. Set to the window, alarm zero is equal to one. Because eventually, you know, you uh, make the application surface so big, it takes up so much RAM, it starts causing problems. And... And that'll be for the states. All right, yeah. So remember earlier I was talking about uh, the overscan of a pixels on the NES. So uh, apparently the reason for the overscan of a pixels on the top and the bottom of the screen is because mini S games are built at 256 by 240, but due to the nature of the 4x3 CRT monitors, they were expected to stretch to fit. So the extra eight pixels allowed the game to stretch from their native resolution to fit four by three without creating any black bars on the top bottom, uh, top or the bottom of the screen. So there you go. We're gonna throw in a step in step here. And make sure this is in the end, end step. Because uh, we're gonna have to be very strict about where we put certain uh, step uh, event stuff so anything that involves movement will go into the step event anything that involves input will go into the begin step and uh, then camera work goes into the no wait anything that involves input will go into the begin step and then anything involving camera work will go into the end step that way you can see it you can see what's moved. Then underscore user state underscore and alarm zero and
this might be useful for you so I'm gonna put this in here draw draw GUI so using the global debug option uh, draw set font to the default display write all specs so this is a small script by pixelated Pope it just draws all of the, your display specs onto the screen so all the information about your uh, view and everything if you need to check to make sure if anything's worked properly or not then I also add here draw text uh, X Y this draws it at 4 and before and we had this X Y so I was drawing the X Y position of the camera because I was having trouble with the camera not being on screen I was trying to figure out why it wasn't on screen and this was all related back to the texture page issue I was having earlier. Draw underscore set underscore font back to the global dot font. Okay, here's an important one. Go to other room start and enable the view. So we're gonna need to view underscore enable equal to true view underscore view visible zero equal to true and camera underscore set underscore view underscore size cam to view underscore width underscore and view underscore height underscore so you need to set up that whenever you go into a new room that way uh, it turns on the view and sets the view size that way you don't have to actually bother with doing that over in the room properties all the time instead you're just handling it in the camera and then you could actually put in stuff like if room is equal to room underscore big view then you could set your view width to like three times the size or something like that if you needed it to be different in a different room okay so we're going to do some states here real quick other user event going to use two first this is a free state this one's very simple. Clamp the view to the room. Bar underscore x is equal to clamp x zero. Room underscore width minus view underscore width. There we go. Then we set x equal to underscore x, y equal to underscore y, and last but not least, camera underscore set underscore view underscore position. Cam underscore x underscore y. Or you could just do x, y. That would work too, I guess, since we set x and y to underscore x and underscore y. So this allows you to move the camera object around the room and to wherever you need it to be. Other user event one fixed state. This one's even easier. Camera underscore set underscore view underscore position cam zero zero. And that's it. It just sets it to the uh, top left corner of the room. And this is for uh, small rooms like the uh, init room and the copyright room. That way we can. That way everything is just right there in the top left corner and you don't have to worry about where the camera is at or anything. All right, so that's the camera all set up. We haven't done state zero yet. Still need this. This will be the follow state. And we're not going to bother with this until we actually put in a player object for it to follow around. So I think you're off the hook for tonight. Thank you everybody for joining me this first episode. I've been, uh, it's a really great opportunity to be able to be working on this with you. It was really fun to set this up in the first place as well. So. I want to give a big thank you to all my Patreons so far. I picked up two. And 
I have to actually put a list and everything together for that and I have to put like a little in screen that I can cut and paste in that'll show names and all that fun stuff but uh, I wanted to thank you both all the people who have already started following me for, for support and of course uh, just thank you to all the people who had bothered watching in the first place because I hope that you learn something and it gives me somebody to actually uh, show this stuff to so Thank you, everybody, and good luck with your programming.